Were you stolen from or did you sign something faulty? That, that was the direct question. I can't say. How do you know a lawsuit is not coming? Because it's not. They don't never get down to it. We going on three years and you still don't know what was stolen, can't say what was stolen. You know what I mean? weird. This is like up here. Not, I can't. This is not the first time that I have said everybody sits behind expenses. It's no big secret. But I've been very direct without divulging the details of people's contracts. That is totally aside from my point, which is if you say someone's been stealing and that's what all this is built on, then in three years, why don't we know what where the stealing was? Why are we still aren't clear on that? There's no manipulation in we're never stolen from, and that has been just a lie to miseducate and mislead y'all for three years. That's very direct. Well, like, There's well, no like, shenanigans there. I, I I, can't speak to their brains. I mean, I'm taking them at their word. He, he must feel like he was stolen from. It's not the fact that y'all not friends. Like, who cares? People do business together, and they don't be friends. The point is, if if Ian won't let me in his house, that lets me know I should have a, my own lawyer. I stand in everything I said. I stand in all of it. And that's that's just the part that we're missing here. Two people that were taken care of the way that they were taken care of cannot un unsubstantially call you a thief and produce no evidence and not expect repercussions. That's well, just the bottom line of it. I don't want to hear none of that friendship. I don't want to hear none of that. Oh, yeah, I was there for your kid. I don't give a f about none of that. Rory doesn't call you a thief. It's only Maul that calls you a thief. Yeah, but he was there. He started it. They they started it <laughs> together. They started it together, and he's not correcting it, so you complicit in it. You complicit in it. And it's even worse if you know better. If you know that nothing was taken from none of you, you have never had nothing that the likes of me would want to take from y'all. This is offensive in so many different ways, but it's not important right now. But, yeah, if you know that nothing was taken and you complicit in it, it's worse. What about the idea of like a Diddy contract where nothing was done illegally? Danny, Danny, in the great words of Ice, I'll take it a step further. I said to, I said back then, hey, y'all should make sure that y'all understand that contract before you attempt to get out of it. That was the best advice I could have given. Like they keep painting that contract to be a mess. I still think that was one of the most favorable contracts in the universe, and you'd be a fool to let to let go of it. So if you let go of it, it just says to me, you don't understand nothing. You don't understand nothing in there. And that's on you. Everybody got to go do their own due diligence. Joe Budden breaks down the breakup with Rory and Maul. That's right. I put up another clip of Joe Budden talking about the end of the Rory and Maul era. And in this clip, he says a lot of things. And there was something in that portion that I left for a little bit later in the video. And we'll get to that later. Well, in this, he basically outlines how, you know, Rory and Maul didn't have a bad contract when they were signed to the Joe Budden Network podcast company, whatever. It seems like a lot of red tape, a lot of web in general that he had lined up for them when they were over there. Now, this is also some insights into why all parties haven't sued each other. And I think that is one of the gravest theories that persist in this whole breakup. Now, this space is from last December. And I know a lot of you are like, Danny, why are you unveiling things from last December well one of the goals of my channel is to be the preeminent source or one of the sources of the breakup of the most popular podcasts in this field the hip-hop podcast and maybe in general so I feel like years from now when people talk about the breakup they won't be able to say that story without this channel sort of like how choke no joke was someone who People look for information about the Rockefeller breakup. I want to be that for the Joe Budden podcast with Rory and Maul. And that's one thing I think people don't understand. They, they see it as an obsession. And I understand sometimes when you make something pop off, you're going to look obsessed. Who would have known that, you know, I could come into a lane that was pretty crowded 
and get busy and work hard, right? A lot of people keep telling me, oh, Danny, Joe's the reason you got hot. I understand. I understand the whole tone of that. But I always say no to jab at those people just to kind of point out, like, Joe could never make anyone post thumbnails he could never make anyone post over 500 videos he could never make anyone do hundreds of thousands of hours of twitter spaces like joe didn't do that for me and to me joe had nothing to do with how i got hot i'm sorry it angers a lot of people i think a lot of people feel like i should donate some of my earnings to joe but no i work harder i think than some people on the joe Budden podcast well probably most people outside of Parks, pardon the noise in the background, Rory, uh, well, not Rory, Ish, Ice, I work harder than some of those folks, I don't know nobody anything, this is something I've done, this is something I've outlined, but back to what Joe said in this video, it was just, you know, him venting, him talking about the business structure of the Joe Budden Network, but one thing he did hint at in this clip here is that Rory and Maul weren't really satisfied with Ian. That was a big fight. I'm talking about he manages you, not the pod. Yeah, that's right. Ian, the manager of Joe Budden and the manager of the Joe Budden Network, and I think the actual business partner of Joe Budden and I would assume ownership of the network was someone who would be at odds with Rory and Maul. And I've always subscribed to this theory that I put out there that I think Rory thought he was going to be the manager of Joe Budden or the Joe Budden Network, and he was the one that was going to close deals, but it never materialized. And then Ian came along, right? Because the Joe Budden podcast starts shortly before the arrival of Ian Schwartzman, and it upends the whole business structure, and it changes everything because then Ian starts to gatekeep some of what the Joe Budden podcast would be when you add another factor, especially someone overseeing the business, then issues might arise. And if you look at this interview I did with Rory, where he basically says that, you know, before there was a manager, he was the guy. And we met with loudspeaker. They tried to sign us. I, before there was any pod manager, I was taking every meeting with, with Reggie. And that was a conversation at one point, not to say it was ever going to get there, but you know, it was a conversation. There's a lot of evidence, there's a lot of tea leaves breaking all of this down, and I think some people forget that storyline of Rory versus Ian. It's a real thing. It's an undertone. It's a side plot in the main drama that is the Joe Budden breakup with Rory and Maul. All right, so let me know what you think about what Joe Budden said in the front of this video. I maintain that just because something is old, it does not mean that it's not a reflection of something that we need to know in the moment. This is new to YouTube. You haven't heard it before. So it's brand new. And a lot of people love this. And I love it myself. I wish there was someone who would parcel out this information to the Twitter streets, to the YouTube streets. And that's what I'm here for. And that's why I do it, because this is exactly the type of content I would like to watch. And I wanted to end this video by saying, you know, I've been watching some people's videos. And I saw a video the other day, and I was shocked. I was, I was like, these people, you know, they make content. I'm not going to say the name. I don't, you know, I'm not talking to anybody in particular. It was, a, it was a long podcast. I'm talking about hours of podcast. And it ended... With a whole hour of a black screen. A black screen. Nothing but blackness for an hour. And it was uploaded to YouTube. And I was like, how can I take this serious? You just put that up there? This is half-stepping. And it's not the editor's fault. It's the people who made the podcast. That shows me a lack of care. That shows me you're not looking things up. You don't watch yourself. I can't take anybody serious who doesn't watch themselves. Pause. You got to be able to see yourself and look at yourself in the T. 
TV, the, the phone, whatever you use to monitor yourself and be like, I like how that look. I like how that sound. I don't like how that sound. Take it out. And YouTube has a feature where you can edit after you've uploaded it and it still hasn't remained changed. It, it's still there. It looks nuts. I don't like how serious they take themselves. It was a severe oversight, one of the grandest proportions. I don't like it, y'all. I don't like it. And I think I'm going to have to bring out Funk Master Stop. Listen, doggy. I see a couple bloggers out there. I don't know if I should call them bloggers. They the side characters in the plot. And I don't even think they really got motion like that. But I can't even say their name. That's how little motion they have. They mans might got motion. But them other peoples don't got it. You not even boys to men. You not Bell Biv DeVoe. You just another bad creation. You're flopping. You lack substance, so you want to crack jokes. You want to talk about how people look. But you can't do research on the stuff you talk about. It's sad. It's terrible. And it's a tragic misrepresentation of the hard thing I helped to establish with Danny from the stop. Look in the mirror. Take your job a little bit more seriously. Get your groove right. Stop being so nasty. And be a little bit more noble with your efforts. Because it's looking real bad out there. You getting carried. And I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. All of y'all. Gotta sit tight, click and went all out. But I have my doubts. And I'm gonna be monitoring. I've already got the clips loaded in the chamber because I hate ya. And I see a lot of the fanboys. They out there trying to say certain things about my man Danny. But my man Danny sat quietly. He sat and watched things play out. So y'all gonna latch on to some narrative. A narrative that ain't real. Pay your way, don't do flyouts. This is Funkmaster Stop. And we here, baby. Take your content serious. Help out your A mic. Come them B mics ain't really putting in work like they should be. This is Funkmaster Stop. Alright, Joe, that was Funkmaster Stop. You know, he's been on ice for a little bit, but sometimes you gotta dust up the turntables, knock on the door, and say, hey, stop! Mr. Funkmaster's time. And this time, Funkmaster Stop was ready. All right, y'all. Follow me on Instagram, The Stop TV. Follow me on Twitter, The Stop TV. It's fun out here, man. We just having a good time. A lot of people don't take yourselves too serious because not too many people are. This is Danny from The Stop. Peace.